very good morning all thank you so much for joining on time and uh, let's start the session ask selva 011 that's 11th session on power system studies where we started long back and probably we have missed quite a lot of sessions in between but uh, we ensured that the session is uh, on every sunday 10 am for the past continuous 3 weeks and we ensure like uh, this whole year we will do the session at sharp 10 am on sundays without uh, any uh, changes thank you so much for your support and uh, let's straight away jump into the topic and see what we are going to see today if you are able to hear me clearly and the screen is clear type out loud and clear in the chat box so that i am aware yes you are able to see very good morning muthuvel so i am able to see your chat and i guess i have seen quite a lot of uh, links which is already there which i am going to use the sessions and i guess like the people those who have joined might have glanced through it but anyway even if not like i will be able to help you to i uh, mean so say give you the link again and at the end of the sessions all right so this is what our status as on today thank you so much uh, for all your uh, i mean continuous support in youtube linkedin facebook google review instagram everywhere thank you thank you so much for that and uh, people are joining from malaysia thank you so much thank you for confirming i am loud and clear and uh, means with your support yes we are uh, slowly but uh, definitely steadily growing thank you thank you so much for the support and we continue to do that i also suggest suggest you to probably practice what we are uh, means learning on a daily basis and probably if you have any questions clarifications post that as a question we will discuss in the next week so that uh, it is just not a uh, monotone like i will be keep discussing something no so you can practice the same thing in using some simulation software for that if you ask me question like how to use some uh, free software somebody has asked few weeks back i am also going to answer that question what are the simulation software which is available free for your uh, i mean enhancing your knowledge on power system studies yeah thank you so much for all that let's move on so today this is what we are going to see uh, till yesterday i thought of uh, discussing only the point 2 3 4 and 5 but just uh, today morning i thought why not uh, stress little more on this uh, list of power system simulation software as a part of ask selva when i have done i have listed out few simulation software few people have added few softwares and few have asked what are the free simulation softwares which are available so i thought of just touching that point at the beginning then i mean so say giving you some free simulation software so that you can also practice in addition to what is the sophisticated uh, standard softwares available in the market so we'll start probably not spend much time but we'll understand what are the power system simulation softwares which are available and the link which i have posted in the first link gives you the list and that also gives you the free simulation software anyway i'm going to go for that don't worry about it then we will discuss about uh, steady state analysis versus transient stability analysis this is also continuous in from os selva 009 we have answered in steady state analysis probably we have seen in deep uh, about why to perform low flow so we will i mean discuss more on what is a steady state versus transient and when do we need a transient and when steady state is sufficient and how to interpret the results we will see something we will uh, probably this is the topic which has been carried out from selva ask selva 10 because we have missed this uh, modeling of this transformers uh, types of different coolings uh, in the last week so i am going to deep on this this week and probably trying to showcase some more important informations and role of synchronous condenser that's a question from one of uh, engineer mohammed so uh, we are we are going to answer that question as well what's the role of synchronous condenser on various aspects and we are going to add at the end of the day like few tips on eta so that helps you to probably quickly use the software eta and those who are staying at the end of the sessions you will get some bonus which i thought like means the people those who are spending their time so why not share some bonus for them like that that's a really an interesting bonus if you want like stay uh, i mean so set till the end right so list of power system simulation softwares this is the first topic this i guess already i have shared this link in the uh, chat history the top chat if you go to the first chat that is this one or else like means what say i can share it once again no worries about it so we will just uh, rather than clicking i have i guess already opened it so let me quickly go on to this this is that page uh, this page was not there for a couple of uh, 
uh, years so that's the reason why like when i have done like uh, oscell was 009 i haven't said this but it's effectively it's not really permanently available sometimes it's available sometimes it's not available i will share this link again in the chat box which helps you to uh, uh, means what to say understand what is the link yeah and it, they have listed all the simulation softwares and they have listed the simulation software all simulation software and as well as the free programs as well i guess few of you have asked in ask silva 009 that is there any free power system simulation tools are available yes it is available so like an in interpss i guess if you are working they are giving or sharing the internal codes of how the software is structured as well right so quickly i mean sort of say to understand what are the softwares i guess dixel and power factory we have talked about it ps cad also ask silva 9 we have discussed in detail that's the software which is used for emtp if you come to this homer it is not really with uh, nrel now right uh, so homer now uh, means with the ul and uh, means this is not power system simulation software this is basically a uh, microgrid commercial evaluation simulation software and means if you want to learn some, uh, slightly more on this uh, uh, microgrid commercial simulation software uh, homer pro you can uh, means for say go back to our uh, youtube channel again and you can find one interesting video on uh, microgrid design using homer pro right i guess that's uh, somewhere here yeah grid connected and stand alone microgrid design so here in this video we have told uh, means explained about that software this is not really a software which is basically for uh, which is basically for uh, uh, microgrid and battery energy storage system design rather than a pure power system simulation software yeah i guess uh, you are able to hear the background voice as well uh, so i cannot help you anything on it just because there is a, uh, i mean so say some background voice because of some borewell operation going on in my nearby office i mean can you just uh, tell me like uh, how clear it is are you able to still hear or uh, i could see the disturbance from my end itself yeah or is it uh, the level at which you are able to hear if that is fine fine or else probably means for say just mute for a few seconds yeah there is a background noise uh, that that's the background noise because of there is a borewell is which is going on uh, just near my office so that that's only reason yeah okay thank you thank you for uh, giving me a confirmation that i can proceed yeah all right so uh, this is a list of simulation software thank you thank you so much so you can understand uh, like um, power factory is for uh, the steady state analysis and dynamic studies electro mechanical transients PS CAD is for electromagnetic transients. Homer is not a power system simulation software. Still, they have listed here that's a commercial evaluation simulation software for microgrids and battery energy storage systems. And here is the uh, uh, I mean what to say uh, key like uh, means you can understand in this video I have posted I guess that link as well if I am right. Yeah, it's clear now. Yeah, because borewell is uh, still running, but with a slower speed. That that's the only reason why it's right. So I means also you can watch this. You can understand how to download the simulation software and how to perform microgrid design. And if you want to know more about microgrid design, we are coming up with another course on microgrids and battery energy storage systems shortly, which you can, which you can watch. All right. So let me coming back to simulation software to see something more. like same you may understand like they have uh, means what say simulation software for psaf and simdist and probably um, simgrid that is for everything which is also so popular simpower powerbolt i guess this is also some free simulation software for a student license with a limited number of buses which is available which you can download dms so this really i haven't used it it's uh, probably has been used in oman probably a few uh, years back but now they have standardized with the dixel and power factory IPSA ETA that is well known that's what we are discussing for a long time Aspen quite popular in US market and Neplan which we have discussed PSSE which we have discussed K 
cap now it is pss cap which you can understand that is with siemens now skm power tools that we have seen ec power i guess in os silva 009 which i have talked about like uh, this is another simulation software almost similar to almost similar to etap and you will get a free version completely only thing which you cannot save it comparatively if you are using a demo version of utap using ec power demo version is better that we have discussed emtprv now it is not really with the dgc company it is with the powersys so that is another electromagnetic simulation tool which could be used yeah thank you for confirming like etsa you have uh, complete notes collections yeah that tool has been widely used in the middle east probably few years back but not not really now it's a is a software yes so thank you thank you for that uh, i am not really sure what's name of you but it's power system engineering thank you for that okay right so there are other other simulation softwares as well like pslf that's from ge my power that's uh, only software from india prdc and uh, pst power engineering so so many so many so many other simulation softwares which you can understand right but at the end if you come here in the bottom you can find out few simulation softwares which is completely free inter pss that is basically a power system simulation software to perform low flow short circuit etc so it could be a replacement for your etap if you want to do some understanding purpose all good right so then uh, like psat that's you can understand that's another simulation tool which is available just similar to matlab which is also uh, comes with the free math power psat right and uh, there is another software atp also which is free which is not really mentioned here like if you want to look at the free simulation software compared to like a ps cad and emtprv there is a simulation software called atp that that's also you can get it at free right so that that's about the uh, simulation softwares the link is there with you probably means explore more softwares and if you need more additional information please yep uh, means what say post it as a comment and uh, i mean so say we will we will ensure that we are getting it and there are quite a lot of uh, manufacturers of the lv circuit breakers has their own uh, tools for short circuit studies and the release coordination so that also you can explore that that will be available at free of cost right so having said that i mean so if you have any questions or clarifications in the list of power system simulation software you post it in the comment box i will take it if not like we will take it in the next week if you have any quick questions on the list of power system simulation software which is free which is uh, uh, i mean so demo version is available etc i guess pssc which i have told like uh, in the previous session that's a student version available at free with the 50 nodes system 50 buses you can you can simulate all this using pssc right right steady state analysis versus transient analysis let's go to the second topic i guess this link also i have shared it in the chat box i will share it again once yeah i can see quite a lot of chats thank you for that yes this is what we have started in os silva 009 as well so power system studies has majorly classified into steady state and transient and in steady state like we have discussed load flow short circuit harmonics relay coordination arc plus and everything and in transient we have splitted this into electromechanical transients and electromagnetic transients i guess like i can remove this etap excellent power factory and pssc here because i have created another option on the other side like uh, what are the softwares which we are used just probably exactly from the same uh, the link which i am using so electromechanical transients and electromagnetic transients that that that's what like we are uh, going to see and probably we are not really going to see all this today so just means was a few more things to add compared to the os silva 009 where we have just touched only the low flow analysis we we go further to other studies and probably classify more onto the transients yes it is a, just not abb abb siemens almost all the simulation softwares has a software for this lv uh, protection good so moving forward like studies also which i have uh, softwares also i have added on the other side like that is etap excel and pssc in a plan some famous softwares which i have added i have given the link as well for this website so means also if you have this mind map you can just click and you can probably go to this link so you can try once if you want 
yeah that is a link which i have added in the mind map so that like means so you can watch this at any time and i guess this i have shared it you can you can use it as well right so now coming to this question steady state and transient the difference between steady state and transient that that's what the topic or probably means we are going to see more on it so why a uh, short circuit is also called as a steady state or shall we classify short circuit as a steady state that that's the biggest question or probably there are quite a lot of questions relevant to that that that's the reason why today also i am just thought of adding more onto the steady state versus uh, transient so when we say short circuit is a steady state and when we will say uh, i mean short circuit is a transient any answers for that you just let me know when short circuit study can be treated as a steady state analysis when the same short circuit is treated as a transient transient analysis if you have any answers yeah just look at uh, and post that answers and i will move on to the other studies similarly harmonic analysis also can be probably performed with the two different things like a steady state harmonics as well as a dynamic harmonics what i mean by that if you are running an arc furnace the harmonic will not be same from its start to end so you can perform this you can perform this uh, dynamic harmonic analysis also if you have i mean sort of right methodology and probably whenever you are going for a dynamic compensation or like rather than going for a passive filter if you are going for an active filter and probably means for say dynamic harmonics probably means for say to to an extent it helps right so then probably relay coordination or flash this are all we are claiming as a, i mean uh, steady state analysis at thing we are also claiming that as a steady state analysis let's try to understand why we are claiming this uh, low flow short circuit harmonics relay coordination or flash at thing all the studies as steady state analysis because means what say either whenever you go to this uh, means what say load flow study case or uh, short circuit study case or any study case you will not have any option to run the study for uh, some time and you may not be able to specify the time step so probably means what say to add on to this let me probably means what say uh, quickly help on it go to this uh, uh, help desk and going to this uh, stability because the license at currently what i am using really doesn't have the transient model transient stability model so i am just using a help file to explain you this right before that let's see toolbar study case editor yep so here if you look at this study case editor of a transient stability i am picking up this because uh, this model is not available with the license what i am holding now so here if you look at this transient stability the first tab is as same as the load flow means whenever you are performing a transient stability of course you can perform the transient event on the tran i mean steady state so this has been used this has been used to perform load flow that to initialize conditions are to set initial conditions are to set a steady state and after that you are creating an event if you go to the second tab event here you can understand okay my goodness that's not there yeah here it is so when it comes to the event you can understand here you can create an event you can create a specific event at a specific time like means for say here they have created uh, event at 0.5 seconds that is a three phase fault at a bus and probably means at 0.7 seconds they are clearing the fault right and they are running the total simulation for a 5 seconds and the simulation time step is 0.001 so answer when you have the option to run a steady state to initialize the conditions and probably means or say allow this uh, means a steady state for some time and creating an event at some time here like uh, the event has been created the first event has been created at 500 milliseconds that is 0.5 seconds that is the event of three phase fault on a bus specific bus and the fault has been cleared 
at 0.7 seconds right and you are running this simulation for a 5 seconds and the time step is 0 0.001 and means you are plotting the graph and the plotting time step is like 1 into the uh, simulation time step so you are getting a graph as well so this is a typical example of a transient stability you will not get this in uh, any of the steady state analysis so here if you take load flow or a sound circuit or a harmonics or a relay coordination or an R plus or an earthing, you don't have any such an event which is created on something else. Right? Even if you run a short circuit analysis, that short circuit analysis is a steady state analysis because your objective is just to find out the short time rating, making breaking, DC breaking capabilities of the breakers, you are trying to find out the over voltage etc means if you know probably go a bit more depth on how this power system simulation software works internally for short circuit analysis i mean so let's say i the short circuit current is identified using v into y v is the voltage y is the admittance so this is the matrix which i am talking about if you have a three bus system then you can understand the y bus matrix is three cross three right so i the current at all the three buses can be identified by v into uh, y bus matrix you will get this and that short circuit is not going to i uh, mean so say simulate with a case like this 0.5 seconds uh, you are creating a fault 0.7 seconds you are clearing the fault and you are running the simulation for a 5 seconds you are uh, means uh, doing it with a simulation and time step of 0 0.001 this or all happens only in the transient stability transient analysis not really in the steady state analysis here like where the short circuit which is conventionally what we are running so to make it better understand like let me go to the short circuit if you go to the short circuit here you really do not have any option to select what is the total I means what's the uh, time at which the fault has occurred and when the fault has been cleared and what's the time step and what's the plot options nothing is available so that's the real reason why i am claiming this as a steady state analysis it's not a dynamic analysis or it's not a transient analysis so here i mean so say iec 61363 has only a plot option how much time you can uh, plot iec 61363 you may be aware if not like uh, go back and uh, refer our video on short circuit studies and probably means we have discussed quite a lot on that What's the difference between 60909 and uh, 61363 in this video? Please watch that. Like you can you can understand where IEC 60909 is not available. It's not applicable for means of a dynamic short circuit. So IEC 61363 is a dynamic short circuit, but transient short circuit. But really means what say you are not really looking at many other parameters like what I have shown as a part of transient. Even in IEC 61363, you cannot decide when the fault occurs and what's the fault duration and etc. etc. So here, what is transient event? Transient event which you can easily understand. Transient event what we have seen here. Yeah. So yes. So, yeah. so you can create a fault at the instant at which you need and you can clear the fault uh, uh, at the instant at which you need and you can simulate all these cases and it is not really necessary that the event has to be in the fault and it is not really necessary that uh, that uh, event has to be on a bus the event could be like a loss of excitation on the generator or probably the ramp up or ramp down of generator or that could be a opening or closing of the breaker or that could be uh, uh, means what say sudden loss of uh, load or capacitor closing or capacitor uh, deenergization it could it could be anything so answer this transient stability event you can create on all the elements what you are seeing here in the steady state uh, probably means what you are looking at here means what say it could be on any equipment either a fault or an event that is changing from a steady state to dynamic just give me a second i am getting an again a
yeah so sorry for the disturbance like today i am facing quite a lot of noise in and around our office so that that might be the real reason why there is some small interruption in between all good so now uh, i mean so why i have told like a transient we couldn't run because we don't have that model that that's a real reason why i mean so i couldn't show it if you have a transient stability analysis if you have a transient stability model go to this transient stability model then go inside it like you will get an option like this right transient stability if you go to this toolbar right So you will get this option. You can probably explore what is available in event, what are the events you can create, and what are the equipments you can create this event, and where and all um, uh, probably means for say what are the elements which you can plot, and you can probably explore more. So you can create probably means fault at one seconds, and probably you can you can look at like clearing the clearing the fault at one point one seconds or one point three seconds and so forth. That will that will get you uh, quite a lot of ideas. all good so uh, probably means i guess now the difference between uh, the steady state event and uh, transient analysis is clear steady state we are assuming that the system is at the same state across or the total duration of uh, the system which we are running or a simulation which we are running whereas a transient we are creating a different kind of events in the total simulation time and probably we are trying to see how the parameters are changing with respect to time because of the event which has been created and if you have carefully looked at this in etap when i have shown the electromechanical the time step is in milliseconds like 0.001 so it's in milliseconds if you go with the time step of like milliseconds then that's classified as electromechanical transients and out of which like you can have quite a lot of other things like angular stability voltage stability motor starting grid eye landing load setting etc but if you want to study something like 1.2/50 microseconds waveform of lightning or 8 bar 20 microseconds of lightning or i mean for switching events which are much faster and that uh, time duration is quite quite small then you need to have a time step of Uh, a microseconds or a nanoseconds to get the uh, to find out the over voltages during lightning switching etc so for that what you are using is electromagnetic transients and that's where i have told the software what you need to use is ps cat and the mtprv right so when you go by that like you can understand like uh, you will perform other other analysis anyway this mind master is available to you you can you can just watch and you can probably means or say play with the same thing what what you are using for uh, uh, means what when you want to understand right any questions let me look at if there is any questions in the chat box to take a few questions when you calculate idc it will vary time to time that we can say as a dynamic that's a question at the time of calculating the asymmetrical fault current yeah that's a good question uh, from mutuvel yeah so mutuvel is just trying to say i mean so say why not call the short circuit study as a transient study because we are trying to find out the dc component at a different time yeah i guess like we have discussed this only with respect to the application in our other cases but today let's see i mean what say even then why we cannot call this as a transient stability we will see so i am just using like a 11 bar 0.4 kb um, this again and again telling you should not use typical it is at x by r because that's the standard which comes from a different uh, older version you need to use the iec 60076 port 5 the latest version and you need to use a typical impedance if at all if you want to use and if you are using the impedance you need to specifically use the tolerance as well right so just to demonstrate like why we cannot really claim this uh, short circuit even if we are finding even if we are finding yeah, the short circuit analysis let me just run this this is a typical short circuit case just everybody runs if you are running a fault i have run a duty 
which means it's a three phase fault and I'm just going to the report you are finding out the DC current I am not denying it but let me explain what's the difference and why we cannot claim this as the transient state I guess a report is taking a bit time just give me a second uh, let the report comes yep that's good fine so probably means this is the report when you are running a short circuit so you can find out when you are creating a fault at some buses you will be able to find out the time and along the time you can find out this IB symmetrical, IB asymmetrical and IDC components so since this is also time like 1 milliseconds, 2 milliseconds right and like 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds shall we call this as a transient analysis answer is no because here also I mean so to say we are not really creating any event on a steady state analysis and trying to measure some parameters so if you know like when there is a fault fault consists of two components one is a sinusoidal component and another one is an exponentially decaying DC component and the exponentially decaying DC component is find out with a formula like you might if you understand like this DC component is like I into e power minus t by tau based on the time constant of the system the DC component is find out apart from that we are not really using any formula or probably any other mechanisms to find out the DC component. DC component is easily found out using a formula with the I DC is I into E power minus T by tau. I guess there is a big background noise. I guess now it is little bit controlled. Yeah. So E power minus T by tau. T is the uh, different time and tau is the time constant and I means what to say you are just simply finding out this value but uh, literally you are not really changing the instant at which the fault has occurred like in a sinusoidal wave if you take 50 hertz system that uh, time duration is 20 milliseconds time uh, duration is 20 milliseconds for one cycle and on what instant the fault has occurred we are not really controlling it whether the fault has occurred at uh, 5 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds or 7 milliseconds whether it has occurred at the voltage 0 or voltage max etc etc which we are not really understanding that means we are not really trying to study and this DC component this DC component changes just not with respect to an x by r ratio but also with respect to the instant at which the fault has occurred right so that's the difference which I am trying to make Rather than running this uh, means what say fault in an RMS simulation tool, if you are trying to make the same short circuit in an uh, EMT tool and try to create a fault at a different instance, then try to find out the DC current and the same uh, symmetrical and asymmetrical RMS current that will change. That's also a real reason why when there is a fault at a site, the fault current what we are calculating using uh, ETAP simulation will not match with the results what we are getting from the disturbance recorder. There could be multiple reasons including the fault impedance etc. But the DC component is just not really depends upon only the X by R ratio. It is also depends upon the instant at which the fault has occurred. So why we cannot claim this as a, a transient? Why still it is a steady state analysis? Because uh, I mean, so say, still again we are finding out the fault current using, uh, I mean, it's internally it is calculated like I equal to V into Y, that's all matrix. And then the DC component is find out at a different uh, times with a simple formula. And I mean, so say, we are not really creating any transient event like a fault or clearing the fault or loss of load, loss of generations or switching, no, no, nothing else is happening. That's the real reason why we uh, generally say this is a steady state analysis. But as I told, like in transient stability, if you go transient stability, you can create that's what if you have that model, you can try it, or else, like next week, I will try with some software where if we have a transient stability, right? So here you can go and check, I means what say you can create in number of events, n number of events, you can create the event at a different times. 
and then means also you can create the event for a different equipments and for the different equipment itself you can create a different actions like if you take bus then it will come like a three phase fault single phase fault and probably uh, means for say clear fault right here they have cleared the fault right similarly if you pick up a generator then probably the loss of excitation uh, uh, means for say loss of turbine that is a prime mover uh, loss of prime mover and probably means for say voltage ramp voltage ramp up ramp down so you will you will get many things like if you take a circuit breaker open close right similarly for a grid you can understand so cables i mean so you can you can put like cables different uh, length you can create a fault if you select a cable here then you can create a fault and you can create a fault at a different length like 10 percentage of the length 20 percentage of the length just to try to explore the software if you have a transient stability model we have and you can control what's the total simulation time and you can control the simulation time step as well so this is this is what i have specifically talked with respect to the difference between emt tool and rms tool so means when i say electromechanical that that's basically an rms here when we talk about electromagnetic this emt tool here the time step is in nanoseconds or i mean what say like microseconds whereas here this uh, time step is in milliseconds so uh, by means of using electromechanical transients you may not be able to study or see the voltage rise etc which happens in microseconds or nanoseconds right i guess that that answered your question muthu let's go to another question only transient stability based on the parameters defined has time step i have done once using switching capacitance okay thank you power system so you have like i mean sort of say uh, 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 as i told like ps cad and emt prv they have some uh, um, uh, softwares I means like ps cad you can use a free software up to 14 nodes and emtp also offering quite a lot of free programs uh, free basic programs and karthik if you are there like you can share that i guess you have said that in a couple of times in the telegram group but uh, if you have once more uh, you can share it for the benefit of youtube uh, sorry, this, uh, youtube users there are some free training programs offered by emtprv and they are also giving two weeks free software where you can probably practice this emt electromagnetic transients any one have the note for the etap software how to generate the tcc curve okay i don't think it is a difficult cost to create a, uh, difficult uh, to create a dc i uh, mean so a tcc curve uh, to answer your question uh, uh, sikoi so probably means for say you put up a relay you put up a circuit breaker then you can probably means for say uh, easily create this uh, tcc graph like means if i am putting on the hv side for 2.5 mv transformer on the hv side i know the full load current is about 131 amps so i am just giving 150 amps as the uh, ct and probably means for say i have output if i have model circuit breaker i could have given the output to the circuit breaker and over current i can pick up a relay whatever may be the relay which you want and say example if i am picking up say example or ef or or e yeah ref615 then probably means for say i have to use i mean for say the correct pickup currents correct time dial and probably create a through fault current and find out like what's the instantaneous settings and like what's the curve whether it is a solid layer through system or resistance at the system so all this which probably means for say you need to check once you have done this then creating a tcc graph is not really so difficult just select the relay go to the relay coordination model and probably use the option you will get right so probably you can merge this graphs as well if you want right you got it right so uh, means it's it's uh, i mean quite simple and straight forward you select a relay you select a relay or select a multiple relays if you want to i mean have all the relays in the graph where you want to see the discrimination etc then use i mean what's a create a star view you will get it yeah thank you thank you so for that i guess that's all about the questions 
Right, so let's let's move on to the next topic. I guess like the steady state analysis versus transient analysis, which we have talked something. This link has been shared. Still, we have not really covered more of the other studies like short circuit harmonics relay coordination or plus everything. I generally suggest you to watch this short circuit a short circuit video. Load flow we have covered in our silver zero zero nine, and probably means other studies probably means what say in the upcoming days we will we will really take it up. And when you want like this electromagnetic transients. Uh, with respect to all this temporary over voltage SFO, FFO, etc. For that, also we have a video in our channel where uh, Dr. Bhupati from EMTP has done some sessions. Yes, here here you can watch. Like means what say if you want to watch, uh, like uh, I mean what say what's the time domain versus uh, phasor domain? What's the advantage of uh, I means EMT tools over the RMS tools, etc. Which you can watch. And then, like you can also get their contact numbers. I guess that we have added in description. If not, like you might be getting it in the chat box at the end, or probably means also they have shared at the for technical clarifications or something. Yeah, sorry. I'm means also I'm not anyway going to play this, but you will get uh, some sessions. Uh, I mean, also some contact numbers of them. Like you can approach them for getting further. Uh, updates on the EMT tools that that's also available if you want like on the EMT side which you can take right so we will we will see more on to the uh, other studies probably means was in the upcoming weeks and let me move on to the next one various cooling types of transformers various cooling types of transformer which we have discussed in our silva which we have started Basically, we will go a bit more depth today. So you can classify the transformer majorly into liquid and dry type. Let's start with the dry type that that's quite easy and straightforward. And as soon as you change it to dry type, you can understand like the temperature rise has been extremely higher, right? I mean, you can understand when we are moving to dry type, this predominantly such a type of transformers are of class H insulation. Class H insulation will withstand up to 185 degrees Celsius. So the temperature rise allowed can be up to 130 or 140 degree depends upon the ambient. So if your ambient temperature is 30, yes, the additional temperature rise allowed is like 150, 30 plus 150 is 180, which is less than 185. That's where the class of insulation of this dry type transformers are uh, means what's it generally manufactured. So when you select a dry type, you can have probably sealed, right? Where you can find AN, AN, AF, GN, GN, AF, right? AN, AF, all this, all this different kind of uh, coolings mechanisms which you can understand. And where to use this dry type transformers? If it is an indoor, it is mandatory to use dry type transformers. And in the, um, I mean, below ground level, that is underground, it is always advisable to use dry type transformers. Wherever you have a problem with respect to this transformer oil and the fire issues, then you can go with this uh, dry type transformers. So you have an option like sealed, non-enclosed. There also means what say the cooling remains same, but probably means if you go to the non-enclosed, then probably means what say you can understand like means what say the temperature rise. Uh, probably means what say it depends on what's the class which you are using, right? So you have to be a bit more careful, and probably means if you have applied all these transformers or used it. All right, we will, we will discuss more onto this transformers, but you have to understand what is a sealed, what is non-enclosed, what is enclosed, and enclosed, what, like what are the uh, classes which is available, right? Totally enclosed, and I means what's a vented, right? Probably means you might be most predominantly using like this cast resin uh, transformers or VPI transformers, etc. with respect to the uh, dry type transformers, right? So you can choose what's the type of transformer which you are using and what's the class which you are using and accordingly your temperature rise, temperature rise will change. And that's basically depends upon what's the kind of insulation class which has been used for those transformers. Right. So that's about the dry type. Probably means if you want to learn more about this transformers of dry type, uh, probably you can Google it with the um, cast resin transformers or uh, means for say VPA transformers. I'm not really going much depth, probably if needed, like we can see that uh, later. So let me uh, 
gas pressing power transformers yeah so you can understand like gas pressing power transformer how it looks like right and probably you can go for another transformers as well right so there are different kind of trade transformers which is available yeah. the bonus is calling me all right fine so this is about it like means you can probably explore more onto that uh, uh, more onto that uh, in the days to come that's about dry type transformers if you go to the liquid you have a mineral oil that's the typically most of the times the transformers which has been used and then probably means for say you have an option to use like a synthetic synthetic liquid with the temperature or boiling point of more than 300 uh, probably the non flammable synthetic liquids you can you can try different type of liquids and probably means when you are going for a mineral oil and probably means also if you are looking at others probably means also you have to just have a look at this derating also when i have changed probably from this you might have noticed there is some some derating so you have to be a bit careful what's the class which you are using etc and software by default takes an ambient temperature of 30 degree but you might be using your temperature i mean so say with an ambient temperature of 40 degree or 50 degree or 55 degree or even 60 degree if you go with the countries like middle east so if i am thinking like if i am changing this to 40 degree means also that there is a derating of 9.6 percentage right even if you go by 31 degree like means or say after the designed ambient temperature every one degree rise will probably reduce this uh, by approximately one percentage so if i go with 35 then probably 4.9 percentage reduction in the rating that can be uh, like you can write like 0.99 power 5 if you put it you can match this values as well like how we are getting let's take a quick example this is the design ambient temperature this is an actual ambient temperature the difference between this is uh, 15 degree and we know like uh, means what say for one degree rise the reduction is one percentage so that is like 0 0.01 that means the remaining power left out is 1 minus 0 0.01 that is 99 percentage so the derating at 45 degree is this right you will get only 86 percentage let's validate that using etap as well right so you can understand the derating is 14 percentage that's exactly what i have arrived 1 minus 0.86 right so if i multiply this by 100 so 13.99 that's what the software is uh, means what's a rounding off and it's giving us 14 percentage so means here the logic is the transformer derating is one percentage for each and every degree temperature rise above this ambient temperature so whenever you are using your temp uh, i mean transformer at 35 degree or 45 degree or 50 degree please please don't use this 50 because i mean what say our transformers when we say 2.5 mva this is 2.5 mva at an ambient temperature of 50 degree that that's how the transformers are designed but the software ETAP takes by default the rating which is given is with an ambient temperature of 30 degree. So if you change this ambient temperature to 50 degree, then it will give a D rating that that's not the right way to use it. So logically, I mean, so say what we are asking is not 2.5 MVR at 30 degree and it is D rated to uh, means what to say 2.05 MV at 50 degree. No, what we are using is we are getting a transformer of 2.5 MVA at a 50 degree ambient itself that means like at a 30 degree that that's really much higher than what's uh, what it can carry beyond 2.5 mb so that that's with respect to this uh, uh, the type of uh, uh, transformer with respect to the coolings and probably with respect to the ambient temperature never ever use any ambient temperature other than 30 with respect to eta because the rated mba is designed for 30 degree ambient in eta right but when we are asking a specification in a real time, we ask the rating with the what's the ambient temperature at which the transformer is designed. OK, 
Okay, we'll take few questions from Tarek. What about the change in load model if voltage drops below certain level? Can you please explain? Uh, Tarek, but like it means you can understand uh, um, when the voltage goes below 0.7 per unit, uh, voltage goes below 0.7 per unit, then constant power loads can be converted into constant impedance loads. So your constant power load cannot be a constant power load, constant power load till the voltage reaches zero. So I means also if you have a constant power load and if the voltage go below certain range, like 0.7 per unit is not really a normal nominal operating voltage, right? So means also when the voltage goes below it, this equipment loses its constant power property and it might be changed to constant impedance. If you want to read more on to this, like I means when this uh, load behavior, how it changes and when we say like a constant power from what voltage to what voltage it is a constant power, etc. There is a beautiful book called, uh, um, there is a beautiful book called uh, Power System, sorry, Voltage Stability by Kutsum. I guess like means also I can Google it and I can just uh, check what's the book, like Voltage Stability by Kutsum. Yeah, that, that's a beautiful book which you will get, right. Yes, like let's look at the image. Yeah, this is the book, like Voltage Stability by Kutsum. So that's an amazing book. Like you can you can understand uh, means how does this property of this uh, loads will change and even like uh, types of load like zip load, exponential load, polynomial load for all these stuffs. Like this is this is an ideal book to go through. Yeah, right. So going to the next question: Do the schooling options have impact on power system studies like sizing calculations? Answer: Of course, yes means what to say if you are blindly using I means what to say um, other that that's fine but like means what to say if you take an example of a transformer which is like uh, 800 MV or 900 MV and that is definitely for OFAF right so let me take ONA and ONAF OFAF right so it means if you have a transformer like this let, let me take maybe an example of like 400 MBA and ONA. Like this transformer is 400 MBA on oil natural, air natural, and 500 MBA on oil natural, air forced, and 625 MBA on oil forced, air forced. So the cooling definitely have an impact on the rating, and better the cooling, higher the rating of the transformers. And I means what say if the pump is off, then you can understand this is derated to 500 MBA. If the fan is also not there, then it is derated to like 400, 400 MPa. So you can understand like uh, what's the impact of cooling on the transformer rating. So when we say transformer rating, the transformer rating has to be essentially specified with few other technical parameters. The one key important parameter is an ambient temperature and other important parameter is what's the type of cooling. I guess uh, that's the that's the update on the transformer impedance and probably means if you want you can explore more and you can check or post your questions we will take it up roll of synchronous condenser i guess like we are running sort of time but still we will try to cover very quickly what is synchronous condenser and we will deal more on the synchronous condenser on upcoming weeks Overexcited synchronous condenser is basically called as a, uh, means overexcited synchronous motor is basically called as a synchronous condenser this supports reactive power that means it has a capability to control the voltage it has capability to control the reactive power it has the capability to maintain the power factor and very importantly because of the renewable is growing exponentially this helps to uh, means what say maintain the short circuit current the biggest drawback what the inertia less renewable integration does is like the short circuit current is quite less so your protection will be extremely difficult so the role of synchronous condenser is to maintain the short circuit level which i guess like more or less many countries now going back to the synchronous condensers in a big grids and synchronous condenser is since it's a machine it has a physical inertia and that inertia adds uh, to the system and that enhances the stability of the system we will see some simulations with like how synchronous condenser behaves the synchronous condenser uh, means uh, like it's a motor. The drawback is it has uh, higher losses, higher maintenance. Uh, I mean, so say availability is less compared to all the static devices. 
but it has some great characteristics on the voltage control or reactive power control or power factor control this our powertronic devices with like a statcom or svc also can do but that injects a harmonics to the system here it, there is no harmonics that that's an advantage but means the very advantage is here in the short circuit current the devices like powertronic devices will not be able to contribute for the short circuit and they may not be able to enhance the system strength whereas synchronous condenser will be able to increase the short circuit level and the inertia of the synchronous condenser enhances the stability of the system we will see few more uh, uh, few more applications of uh, this uh, synchronous condensers with some simulations in the in the upcoming weeks and etap tip i guess like uh, uh, this has been said in our linkedin if you are working in a large projects and if you want to copy the part of your projects to another projects you cannot really use an option called copy and means what say move from dumpster copy and move from dumpster will work only within the projects but i guess like if you have three or four engineers working in small different different portions of the large projects and if you want to uh, really means what say copy all together to a single systems then what we need to do i guess this is an etap tip which we have used right yeah let let me quickly go on to the etap tip where we have used it yeah here this is where we have explained like means what we need to do is like uh, means for say where the project you have to select and you have to go to the data exchange you have to just click export to the clipboard and go to the new projects where you want to uh, means import where you want to import just go there and import to the import to the system right so means what say from first go to the project where you want to copy the data select only the portion of the data which you want to copy if you want to copy the entire projects give control a you will get all the equipments then go to the tools sorry data exchange export to clipboard and go to the new projects like means what say if i will try to do it takes bit more time right yep i have just copied that project means what say if i go to the new projects new project means what say move from dumpster will not be there move from dumpster option will not be there at all but you have an option data exchange and you have an input from clipboard yeah you you can easily import from this clipboard yeah there is another option as well you can create a template and probably mean for say you can copy it but basically creating a template is basically for copying something and repeating it in most of your projects that that's where the application of template comes in and import clipboard export clipboard is basically just to, to copy i mean it's fraction of your projects to another other projects so any voltage tolerance for the synchronous condenser to operate till what voltage drop it supports the grid it supports the grid at any voltage there there is no uh, means or say constraint uh, as long as i uh, mean or say it has a capability of course its reactive power capability shrinks with respect to the uh, voltage but uh, means or say if you take capacitors and all uh, probably the reactive power support uh, uh, means or say uh, creates uh, probably means or say much worse like capacitors you might have seen in our previous video on the capacitor when there is a reduction in voltage the reactive power is needed but the reactive power generation of the capacitor also drastically comes down that's to answer a question of one of your name i'm not really able to understand who is that that's decent idea yep thank you and dumpster is a clipboard for a current active project alone yes you are right so copy and move from dumpster is works only within the projects not not really for outside projects on right so as i told there are two bonuses which we have promised one do you want to join the webinar which we are doing on 24th april 2021 that is this is a mistake like 24th april 2021 at 10 am of course right 2021 year is missing anyway so that topic is on reactive power compensation for a large scale solar farms go to this linkedin you will get that linkedin page we have posted a question try to answer that question we will sort list uh if you have a right answer it we will we will uh, you will be getting a link to join the session that session is going to happen on coming saturday at 10 am 
if your answer is not right you will not get the link but we will make uh, means for say the session probably means for say some other sessions similar to this but of course that's not a free session paid sessions that update will come on in our linkedin page itself that's a bonus one probably means uh, that's an interesting question go back to this and watch read out this discuss about this and probably means what's the question which has been asked just try to answer that question second bonus is this those who are watching i mean so to say give me a 30 minutes time and probably join in an other interesting session if you wish right now right i will just copy this and paste it this is for the people those who want to join or staying till the end of the session that's what i have promised the session starts right now not really right now okay i will put it in the description box immediately after this i guess like this uh, link is so uh, lengthy and probably means uh, that's going beyond the uh, 200 characters so i couldn't paste it uh, but we will immediately add it in the uh, description you can join using this link in this uh, topic like where i am going to talk for a closed group on dynamic modeling of the generator thank you so much for joining us today and uh, lee uh, means for say let's have a great sunday and those who are joining this session join at uh, sharply at uh, 11:30 in this link and those who are not joining thank you so much and we will meet again on 10 am on next sunday thank you thank you so much have a nice day